I'm Glenn Gare from the State University of New York at New Paltz. I teach in the psychology department, and I have been asked today to speak about the broad concept of wellness in terms of my particular research area, which has to do with evolutionary social psychology. So I'll be talking about how we can understand wellness in our social interactions and our social relationships from an evolutionary perspective. So we are going to start with a little bit of a puzzle, because evolutionists like to do that. Um, why does math exist? Why do we have advanced mathematical abilities? Every single person I know at one point or another has asked the question, why do I need to learn this stuff? Every kid asked that of their teacher at some point. College students who are in my statistics class asked me that at some point. It's a real common thing. Why do we need to understand advanced uh, mathematical concepts? Is this going to be helpful in my future? Is it going to be helpful in my career? This is something that people ask. Teachers famously give lame answers to this kind of question. They will say something like, well, it's, it, it's going to be in Algebra 2, so you need to learn it in Algebra 1. That's kind of a bad answer. It's going to be on the SATs. That's why you need to understand it. That's kind of a bad answer. We're lagging behind Japan and Korea in math. That's kind of a bad answer as well. From an evolutionary perspective, if we're going to ask a question like, why do humans have a species-typical characteristic, such as the ability to do advanced mathematical calculations, we really need to step back and take a look at how those kinds of abilities would have been adaptive under ancestral human conditions. So from that perspective, let's think a little bit about an idea in evolutionary psychology called reciprocal altruism. Reciprocal altruism is an idea put forward by Robert Trivers nearly 50 years ago. Very powerful idea that helps explain the giving of um, oneself for the sake of others, altruistic behavior. From an evolutionary perspective, altruism poses something of a paradox or something of a conundrum. If organisms evolve to benefit their own survival and or reproduction, then why would you see altruistic behaviors exist at all in the animal world. So Robert Trivers in 1971 published a paper that took on this question head on. Super interesting answer. He essentially said that for altruism to exist or for reciprocal altruism, altruism where an individual helps another with an expectation of being paid back by a member of the same species, for that to evolve, the species has to fit certain criteria. It has to be a species where the individuals can identify each other individually. It has to be a species where the individuals live relatively long lifespans so that help can have time to be paid back. And it has to be um, a species where individuals live in stable social groups, where they see the same individuals over and over again. And Trivers' genius um, revealed that it, he was totally right, that species that don't fit those criteria never have been documented to demonstrate reciprocal altruism. Species that show all of those criteria often demonstrate reciprocal altruism. The species in the world that demonstrates those criteria more than any other species is Homo sapien, is you and me. Human beings are the reciprocal altruistic ape sin qua none, without equal. And that has wicked important implications for how our minds operate and how our social interactions go. We fit all those criteria well. We have long lifespans. We have long-term interactions with the same individuals over and over again in our lifespans. And we can recognize individuals, especially by their faces, with incredible accuracy. One of the very top social cognitive abilities human beings have is the ability to never forget a face. Um, that's part of our evolved architecture. So how does the fact that we are a reciprocal altruistic ape relate to our advanced mathematical abilities? Well, think about it. If you have hundreds of people in your world that you are going to interact with and have social exchanges with on multiple occasions over and over again, you've got to do some bookkeeping. It's going to be very evolutionarily disadvantageous if you end up giving an awful lot to someone and never getting anything back in return. If you're not good at calibrating, you're not good at calculating, you're not good at doing the math of how much you're putting into relationships and how much you're getting back, you're essentially going to die a Darwinian death that evolution selects individuals that are good at taking care of themselves 
in any kind of situation. So the ability to keep good tabs on those kinds of things and to make sure that you're treated equitably by others in your social world, that is a really foundational ability. So how does that relate to math? Let's think about a couple of examples. Imagine you have a friend who asked you for a ride to Newark Airport. Okay, it's a good friend, I'll help the person out. I'll take two hours, drive the person down, maybe have lunch on the way back, get fill up with gas, that's five hours of my Saturday, but it's a friend and I did it. Three weeks later, that friend does nothing else to help you, never thanks you, and then three weeks later says, man, I need another ride to Newark Airport. That might make you feel a little bit like not quite right, not quite settled. You might not really want to help that person that second time. That's because you're doing math, right? You're taking a look at, at, at an equilibrium function and the equilibrium is off. In fact, we run into those kind of situations all the time. Imagine you're at work and a friend's birthday came around and someone volunteered you to buy the cake and to buy the, the plates and the napkins and all that and you did it and everyone's happy. Then three weeks later, it's another colleague's birthday and someone says to you, hey, why don't you, uh, maybe you could set up the party for that person as well. That's not gonna sit well with you. That's going to be um, mathematically inequitable. So a lot of the basic mathematical computations that characterize um, how humans think really relates very much to the ability to maintain equity in social interactions, especially with individuals over long periods of time. This goes all the way back to our deepest evolved roots. And if you want to understand how humans can best have positive, healthy social interactions with other, we absolutely need to understand these kind of mathematical abilities that are ultimately rooted in the fact that we are a reciprocally altruistic ape. That's my take on wellness from an evolutionary perspective. I'm Glenn Geyer from the State University of New York at New Paltz.